Hey man, what's up? Have you ever heard of John DeLorean? John DeLorean, did John he, Z DeLorean, John Z DeLorean. Did he create the car? It fiddle off. Yeah. <laughs> did he really? Yeah, you just gotta <laughs> stole my thunder there. <laughs> just jumped ahead. Like is that I was real though? Trying to pocket that for a big reveal later in the episode. You were gonna go a big reveal. <laughs> yeah, is at hour two. DeLorean. <laughs> at hour two. You're gonna, gonna be like, like you're not gonna believe this. You see, hour two. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not gonna believe this. He, He's, he, he created the DeLorean. The DeLorean. He, did the, the, he did the car. Is that crazy? Okay. <laughs> did he though? That's a real question. No. Yeah, he did. He did. Oh yeah. Um. It, here's the thing. John DeLorean. Uh. I, I don't know if I've ever said here's the thing that early in an episode. Is before, his son actually. man? DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I get the lineage. Well, they're heavy. Scoop divers aren't strong. <laughs> I don't think some people realize how large my head is. Let me put it to the very last notch that it'll go. Kind of like every girl you dated, it was the same. <laughs> Do you on. see this, Terry? I want you to see this. You see this? You see what's happening? He got famous just for doing his job. Maybe um, if you're good enough at yours, you'll get famous too, man. Things I learned last night. I hate so much that you made a Mandalorian joke and you've never seen it. You haven't even seen the Phantom Menace. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> hey, while, right. while we're doing something weird, um, today is a is a day and we're, yeah. we're recording on 9-11 um, and I flew today and okay. I for some reason I've been flying on many 9-11s. Uh, hold on, there's somewhere I'm going with this. What are you doing? I'm no, no, really no, I, you're good. You're good. You're good. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. This is for it. <laughs> so I so know, but I, I was going. All right, Alex has a note. No, no, you don't have to. <laughs> okay, he goes. I don't know. Okay, so it's going through TSA this morning, and yeah. it's like their Super Bowl. Today is their day. Oh God, you know. No, it, I'm saying no. Listen, like this is their day. There's keep, nothing bad at the end going, of this. Just keep there's going. nothing bad at the end just of this. Keep going. It's fine. We can talk about it. Someone accidentally said <laughs> today, and you could see the look on their face. They turned white as a ghost because <laughs> this lady, we're going through TSA. It's very tense. They're mm-hmm. very. I'm telling you, like they are like yeah. on their game today. Yeah. Right? Because I mean, it would make sense. Well, this is the whole reason TSA was was. Yeah, this is the you know, every yeah, TSA true. you go through has the big thing of like you know it's got the, this is why the we never here. forget kind of stuff. Yeah, this lady says. And I think it's just the pressure of all the stuff. She she says, "Okay, thank you." Is she an agent or is she a no? Passenger? She's a passenger. Okay. She's a person okay. going through, and she just goes, "Happy 9/11." <laughs> <laughs> and you, you felt everyone go, "What?" Just the air leaves, the <laughs> and, and, she, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, come back here. I think we need to do a search." <laughs> like, hold on, let's <laughs> let's see your bags real I, quick. I out loud <laughs> went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <sighs> it, was, it was that feeling that you had when yeah. I was like, "Hey, we're recording on a day." <laughs> That's what everyone felt in the whole. Airport. Everyone just went, "Did you just say happy?" <laughs> There's people at C28 that were like, "What did you just it's say?" Free. It was like whenever someone says like Happy Memorial Day, and you're yeah. like, "Okay, okay, yeah. you know." It yeah. was like it was like a Happy 9/11. And she goes, "Oh no, I I mean like to watch her fumble was yeah. very fun." Do you think that will happen? Like with what Memorial Day is now, like, do you think like when we're elderly, oh, and like the last no, generation that I remembers, it'll that, start to. I change? just think they'll they'll eventually treat it like the way we treat December seventh, Pearl Harbor Day. Oh yeah, which that's was interesting, like interesting actually. Yeah, I think about that quite a bit actually. You know, is that that that's one of those like, you know, where were you when it happened kind yeah, of days, and yeah. then uh, the assassination of JFK. JFK yeah, um, those are like kind of those. That's days. an interesting point. But it becomes one of those things that we're yeah. kind of like, yeah, every year we remember it. Yeah. Um. But eventually, I think it. But will. eventually, you don't remember. It. Yeah, but I mean, eventually, something worse will happen. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> that's how. Right. I mean, historically. Hey, that's a cool hat. <laughs> oh yeah, let's <laughs> plug them right now. It's a great time, man. Golly, no, you made it weird, dude. I was just trying to tell a good nine eleven story, and you made it weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's the clip. That's the. Hook. <laughs> Oh man! Seeing Anyways. Back to the Future. Yeah. Okay. I was just—it just makes me mad. I was in it, dude. <laughs> I was in Back to the Future. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I'm were, Biff. I was going to say. Joke. I thought you were trying to say Biff. Okay, whatever. Um. So John. No, dude, I'm Michael J. Fox. 
<laughs> so I'm DeLorean. Uh, here's the thing. So he's the car guy, right? <laughs> what are you looking? Stop looking at me. <laughs> the John DeLorean guy. Uh, John DeLorean. He's the guy who made the car. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> let me just. I'll take this story. Go day. ahead. I'm struggling. John right DeLorean. Now. I'm struggling big right now. Um, so he's the car guy. Car guy. Uh, but he was born in Detroit. Motor City. Sure. Makes a lot of sense. He'd become a car guy. Um, grew up in a, a home that was not great. Uh, his dad was a car man. Um, <laughs> he worked on the assembly <laughs> He's a line. car guy. His dad was a car man. His dad before him was a car watcher. <laughs> All hail, hail the, the watcher. <laughs> um, but uh, it, his dad was on the assembly line and his okay. dad was drunk um, oh. and pretty abusive. And so when he was in high school, his mom left him and took the kids uh, and he said he wanted to build a life for himself and he was very into cars because you know Detroit you have to uh, it, it was it's like it's like growing up in oh, I want to see where this goes. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, was, let's, let's hear it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was hoping I would come up with something more interesting than this, uh, but when I started this sentence, but I was it's like growing up in Hollywood like a lot of people are like I want to be a star. Um, <laughs> People who grew up in Los Angeles are not the Hollywood people. And people who grew up on Hollywood Boulevard, like on the boulevard. Yeah, those are <laughs> not. <Nice. laughs> those, what did you just say? <laughs> those are not stars. <laughs> I think they are. Uh, <laughs> My favorite thing about Hollywood Boulevard is the like overweight Wolverine out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a guy who's like, can't be bothered to stay in shape enough to be like Wolverine, but it still wants you. But it, Still wants to charge you for a picture. Yeah, and he'll get that money. Yeah, get that back. Uh, so he grew up in Motor City. Yeah, really into cars. Uh, so he went to the Lawrence Institute of Technology uh, and got his bachelor's in car stuff. <laughs> he went to Lawrence Institute of Technology. Yeah, which is which, not what you're thinking. But can we get merch from that institute? It says lit, dude. That's kind of tight. That is, yeah. I mean, like it was cool. Lawrence Institute of Technology. That's kind of cool. Uh, I'm pulling up the website. Yeah, let's let's, see. let's, let's, let's <laughs> rap, dude. Come on. Okay, this is too much. Uh, so, so John, he he got really into cars, right? And yeah. he was learning how to make cars. Which he got the a Institute job. Of Technology, Lawrence Institute of Technology. <laughs> got a job for General Motors, uh, building cars and designing cars and stuff, and worked his okay. way up the ladder, the corporate ladder. Sure. Um, and he was kind of the uh, an early archetype of like the Maverick, like the Tony Stark. Um, and it's okay. interesting. I watched a documentary series about it. It's very interesting hearing them describe a Maverick in the '60s versus a Maverick in the Tony Stark era, um, because they were like, "Yeah, he he didn't wear a tie, and he, yeah, <laughs> and didn't conform to the ways would, of corporate world. He would put his shoes on his desk. <laughs> it's like okay." Not he didn't kick his feet up on his desk. He took his shoes off and set them on his desk. That's a power move. And you're like, <laughs> every meeting I go into, I go, "How are we doing, guys?" Kick my shoes off, put it on the desk. It's like, bro, those just one of them. Smell, yeah. yeah you you <laughs> leave the other one on. <laughs> Am I supposed to do something with that? No, I just want you to know that it would be difficult for me to leave this meeting. That's yeah, why I've done I'm this. Just, yeah. And so I want you to know that I'm not one foot in, one foot out on we, this ooh, relationship. That's pretty good. We should make we should turn this into a business custom. Like make this part of our business culture. Where we, tr- do this we should really try to we, but we take off opposite shoes and we put them next to each other in the middle. Yeah. And we don't acknowledge it and just see how many pe- I bet other people, if you're in a meeting with like four people, they we would do it. Do it. For sure. I like this idea. Yeah. Yeah. And what it, what we have to define our culture as a company, don't we? Yeah, My, uh, yeah. We should. Yeah, I was gonna say we should make it like <laughs> that guy on Instagram who's like, if you don't have a six pack ass, you can't work you can't, for me. I'm gonna fire you. Yeah, and he makes a guy. There's a video week. where he makes a guy take off his shirt, and he yeah. goes, "Aren't you embarrassed about oh. this?" <laughs> and he was. And he's like, "Yes, sir." Yeah, yeah, he was. He got fired next week. Um, the 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 shirt. What's guy. more embarrassing? Having a little bit of flab or being in a video where your boss is like, aren't you embarrassed by this? <laughs> that's, that's, that's way worse. Way worse. Way worse. That's way worse. Because you know, like, ah, never mind. It's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, so Johnny gets a job and he works his way up the corporate culture and he's he's a maverick. He's an early sure. maverick. Doesn't wear a tie. Doesn't wear a tie. He kicks his feet up on the desk. Making his own rules. Yeah. Um, and uh, he starts to really see some success. He, w- he worked on the Pontiac GTO um, and he kind of spearheaded uh, a new era of like sports car mm-hmm. um, 
and became um, I don't want to say a household name, but a household name if you liked cars. You know, like if you were sure if you were a car nerd, your whole house knew about him because you talked about him all the time. Okay, like everybody in your house was so annoyed. But if you were a normal person, probably hadn't heard of him before. You know what I'm saying here? Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I like that hat, man. Thank you. <laughs> I left the small one over there. Do you need to go? Yeah, I'll go get real, it real quick. quick. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, was looking at this hat and how good it is. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So, just so everyone can see, odd job hats. Fits in my head, very nice. <laughs> Regular hat, normal hat. <laughs> I don't think some people realize how large my head is. Let me put it to the very last notch that it'll go. This is the last notch. Yeah, the biggest, the biggest the hat gets. Just unnotch it. No notches. Notch free. Can't hold them back. Just wide open. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> I mean, when you put them next to each other, you're like, those are both just hats. Your head kind of looks like, like you know, like a, like you put that on, like you know, like the, uh, not the part with the slice, but the other part, like a honey baked ham. <laughs> but not the slice part. Not the, the slice part. size. The part the that looks like there's a beanie. The ham. Yeah, it looks like there's a beanie sitting up on top of that ham. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that why you brought up my hat? Is to call me a ham head? No, I'm just saying it's a good thing you found odd job hats. <laughs> it's a good thing. Look at that. Look, I mean, straight up. That like looks it's normal. That looks normal. Pretty weird. That other didn't look normal. Yeah, that looks normal. That's what I was going for. All right. Did I bring it up naturally enough for you? That was great. Thank you. Good. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> he he gets a lot of success making cars, and uh, he becomes like a a businessman celebrity. Which is interesting because he doesn't own the company. I, I was trying to think about this a businessman celebrity. Yeah, I was trying to think about this today. Like, uh, like we've got business celebrities out there. Like, but they're all owners. Like who? I mean, uh, uh, I can't like think of Mark a Cuban. One. Yeah, Mark Cuban. Like um, uh, Elon Musk. Grant uh, Mark Cardone. Zuckerberg. Yeah, Grant Cardone. Like, there, there are these household names. We make because, fun of Grant Cardone all the time because they're so because they own the company. That's huge. Like, that's how I. Oh, know Mark Zuckerberg. Them. Yeah, and you but, couldn't think of you couldn't think of Jeff Bezos. I I said Mark Zuckerberg. Anyways, you heard this, you heard the interaction we just had, right? Okay, I'm not dumb. I went. You couldn't think of Jeff Bezos. I said Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> okay, okay, but that's the tone that I'm Tim saying, talks to me <laughs> when he's like so clearly wrong. And he goes, yeah. I said, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> that was I'm just <laughs> such a good representation of our whole friendship is you just confidently being like it's Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> I'm just trying to nurture our toxic workplace culture. Okay, <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, but I, I was thinking about it. I, I don't know if there is any like I can't think of any businessman celebrities who are not business owners like he was famous. He was just like a like he wasn't even a VP. He was just a director of like engineering, and he became okay. like like he was um, close friends with like models and like actors and actresses. Like he was like, and I don't know. Maybe there are people who are like friends with them that are just businessmen okay. or businesswomen, but they're not like famous. He got famous just for being good at his job. Okay. Well, I mean, if your job is designing cars, I mean, I guess, but like, even now, like, I don't think there's a car designer that's like getting on the well, late it's show. Well, because like, he was on the late show. Okay, sure, but I'm saying like he was representative of the company, though. Yeah, he was the face of the. Co- uh, yeah, sure. So he was the and face now, of the brand, yeah. but now that's what I'm saying is that now it has shifted through the marketing era of the '60s and '70s, is that it shifted to the CEO has charisma. The person yeah, the running the company has to has, the, has, has to have to be, the charisma to job. be the face, right? That's Whereas it used yeah. to be the CEO used to be the boring desk job yeah. to make everything run, and you know there was no that's need true. or time or you know there was no need for them to be. And the if guy. it's not the CEO, then they hire an influencer to be the sure. Face. Interesting, interesting. 
Anyways. I mean, it's Wozniak and Jobs. You know, Steve Jobs had the charisma side of it, but Wozniak yeah. did most of the actual yeah design and work. This is interesting. Um, it's like you and me. Yeah. Who's the face of the company here? Let's put it in the comments. <laughs> Pick one. There's a reason I let you put your name in it. Pick one. <clears throat> There's a reason I let you call it Space Tim Media. Yeah, because I'm very, very prideful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he got famous just for doing his job. Maybe um, if you're good enough of yours, you'll get famous too, man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy makes websites. <laughs> And they're like our next guest tonight so <laughs> makes <laughs> websites for churches and you're industrial not gonna believe, companies. You're not going to believe how good they are. Give they're it up so for Tim Stone. Good. <laughs> you know, that's Quest. Love yeah, that's me. The, yeah, yeah, the roots. You, yeah. Hey guys, hey everybody. What's, hey, what's up, going on? Know? What's going on? And then we have to eat all this weird stuff that he gets out of the spin wheel. Yeah, yeah. That's James Corden. That's not the. No, they're all the same. Jimmy Fallon doesn't do the eating stuff. Yeah, he does. You have to like hold a snake or something. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or pet. That elephant. would be my luck. My luck would be to go on the the Tonight Show or one of the late night shows the same night that the Safari guy is on there, mm-hmm. and I gotta like pet a tarantula. <laughs> Would you do hot ones? Hot ones? Yeah. Would you do that? Yeah. A hundred percent. No, I don't know. Um, okay. So I mean, like, I would clear my schedule for the next like days after it. You know, <laughs> give my body <laughs> some time yeah, to give yourself some time recover, to recoup, not go to a festival the next day. Yeah. Um. So the uh, he he got so famous. he got famous. He got you famous. T- you take a long time to tell the story. Is why we have to, we're doing tangents. We're doing tangents. That's what's making it take a long time to tell no. the story. It's because you keep going. I don't know anybody who's got famous <laughs> from just doing their job well. Can you think of anybody who's got famous from doing their job well? So he's all right. He's whatever, fine. Doing his job fine well. we'll speed this story up. So thank he, you. So he made the, the, <laughs> he the, made the DeLorean. Car. He made the car. That's he was like, what about doors that go? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, that's the whole episode. That's the whole story. Can you believe he got famous <laughs> for that? He was on the Tonight Show. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you keep doing, but you're gonna blame me. I said Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I said Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Tell the story. Uh, so he, your parents he are getting class- real mad about how I'm treating you lately. <laughs> <laughs> like your parents are like, hey, Jaren's like bullying you on the podcast. <laughs> It's our workplace culture, mom. <laughs> it's just part of. Aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> are you Pull em- your shirt up real quick. Are you embarrassed everybody. about what you look like? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <sighs> <laughs> I will say. Uh, oh shoot! <laughs> We're both never. wearing preachy sneaky <laughs> shoes today, dude. <laughs> shoot. Uh, Okay, I'll tell the story. Okay, um, <laughs> I mean you might as well. So, DeLorean, uh, he works his way up in the. He makes a couple other cars. He's sure. still famous. Marries a model. It's on the Tonight Show. Has these famous list of friends, uh, and the uh, company he works for, GM. It's like we don't like all this. Like we want a guy who works. And you're, yeah, sure, working, but you're also like gallivanting so cool and like we hate <laughs> how cool you are. GM like got wish, jealous. GM was like you're the coolest guy here and and I'm not and GM, everyone knows and it. everybody doesn't want like they we're trying to figure out why you're famous like we can't figure out all you sure. are is good at your job and so they there was uh, I don't know the there's there's discrepancies on what happened here. Um, uh, there's two storylines storyline a is he amicably left the company. Okay. Not true. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that's true, that, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty confident that's not true. Storyline A amicably left. Not true. I mean, like, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but it's not. But that's not what happened. It's like the moon B. landing. It's like we don't know, but we know. Uh, it's like the what? It's like the moon landing. Like oh. we don't know the truth, but we know the truth. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, storyline B is that he was like pulled out of the office by security. And I don't believe like, we don't want you anymore, anymore. By the way, yeah, I know that was one of the most like. I'm not gonna lie. I got Jaren called me the other day. Hold on, Jaren called me the other day, 
and I didn't answer because I didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> okay. And he left me a voicemail. He was like, he's like, bro, I'm having a crisis right now. And I was like, ah, I should probably call him back. It sounds serious. And I call him back and he was like, hey, so they faked it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, I'm pretty sure they faked that thing, man. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Alex just blank stares yeah, back at you. I'm- Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like this and you want more of our show, we've got plenty of other episodes. One of my favorites is Action Park, a super sketchy theme park that was basically overrun by teenagers and they just made the rules. Uh, It was in New Jersey. It was a wild story, uh, but we did a whole episode about it and I think you'd like it. So uh, when you're done with this one, go check out that episode. But for now, back to this one. So John, he leaves the company. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Either, I'm trying to sell shirts to pay my debt to you. What do you want from me? <laughs> Either amicably or unamicably. Sure. What um, storyline B? Storyline B. Storyline B is he gets he, dragged out by security because they don't like him. Okay. Um, just like the, the 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 festival in the hotel, they didn't like him, uh, and so they kicked him out. And so he uh, Dashcon. Yeah, Dashcon. Thank you. Uh, he got plastic surgery and reinvented himself. So um, whoa, the, whoa. the one on the right is the original John DeLorean. Um, the one on the left is John DeLorean 2.0, the what? reinvented with plastic surgery. And version. he was like, and this is before, but they knew what he meant. He's like, can you make my face look stiff like Jordan Peterson? <laughs> <laughs> Long before Jordan Peterson. <laughs> look at him. But yeah, it is. Look at he, his weird I mean, eyebrows. He, he hardened his jaw, and yeah, he definitely got some, I don't know, what sure. you call that, Botox. Um, Why did he do that? I mean, I think it makes him look a little bit more forceful. Okay. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like looking at that chin, like I didn't know plastic surgery. He changed his nose. Make your chin come out. Look, because his nose used to curve out. Yeah, and he now definitely. It, like, now, goes now it's a little down. bit harder. He looked better before. I'm gonna you say this so? about, dude. I'm gonna say this about plastic man. surgery. It's not worth it at all. That's dumb. <sighs> I don't. That's I don't know, do man. That. I think he looks pretty sharp. I honestly, I was, I was about to say, it it's just the pose. It's out. literally just the pose. No, 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 no. Uh, I got another picture of him and his family. Here's he and him and his family. <laughs> <laughs> You need to look up. You need to go watch this. If you're listening, you need to go watch for this <laughs> moment because this picture is incredible. Why did you do this? <laughs> and their taxidermy dog. <laughs> their dog is so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they do this? Yeah, he's got his dog on his shoulder. He looks like this is like <clears throat> this looks like they're all puppets. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm honestly, I'm really impressed too that his wife's hair is blowing like that, and none she of the rest looks of face tuned before that app existed. She does actually. <laughs> wow. He met her the first time he ever saw her was on a magazine cover, and then uh, and then he, he was told like, his assistant he said bring girl. her. <laughs> no, are I, you serious? I, I don't know the story. But oh, he does say the first time he ever saw her was on a magazine cover. Well, then tell then the story. Then. Up, I, well, I don't know. Well, that's storyline story A. I story yeah storyline B is he got drugged out by security. Uh, yeah, but no, I, here's what I'm saying. I never thought a, a, a plastic surgery jaw could look like I think his jaw looks sharp. I, I think don't. it looks I think his his post plastic surgery jaw like chin looks better. Okay, than it did but what I'm saying is because he, he as, as a person with a weird chin, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I thought about yeah, it when but I saw here's this. the thing about plastic surgery is that you can just tell you know, can you tell though. I never knew until I knew. Yeah, I mean like Plastic surgery. Okay, no Botox. You can tell. Plastic surgery sometimes, though, like that chin, like that nose and that chin. You can't tell. Okay. All right. Anyways, this episode is not about us arguing about the moon or plastic surgery. Um, <clears throat> so he starts his car company, uh, DeLorean, Mar- DeLorean Motor Company, DMC, DMC, DeLorean Motor Company, and uh, he gets seventeen million dollar in funding from people he knows. Uh, and then he goes and he calls uh, the dude who works for Lotus which is a car company. I need you to design it. And then a couple of people from GM and he's like, hey, what if I sniped you from the company? And GM was like, you can't do that. He's like, I'm doing it. And so they uh, they left to start this company and start working on this new dream car. And okay. the concept for this car was pretty ahead of its time. It's like late 70s. And he wanted to, he, he was really interested in fuel efficiency because Nobody cared about that yet, um, and okay. fuel prices were starting to skyrocket. And so he said, "I think 
the consumer of the future is going to care a lot about fuel efficiency because fuel is getting more and more expensive. Okay. So he was kind of ahead of the curve on that. But he also wanted it to be really stinking cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and so he came up with uh, 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 a, a cost saving tool, but also a cool cool tool cool tool <laughs> cool tool. <laughs> That's a cool tool. Uh, and he was like, he's like, what if we just made it stainless steel? He said, we don't paint it. We just get stainless steel. The whole body of the car is stainless steel. And like, we love that. Great idea. So they made this stainless is that steel. Where Elon was, was like, let's do that with the, the Tesla truck. <laughs> Maybe I don't. It could have inspired him. I don't know. Did you see the real ones rolling off the line? Yeah, they look so bad. Awful. Very similar to this. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, if the design is better. Oh yeah. Interesting. Oh yeah. So they so designs this car. Um, here's a here's a picture of it. If you've never seen it, this is the DeLorean. It's got the uh, they call them the gall doors. This is the real like one. seagulls. This yeah, is this not is, the design. Yeah, this is a a production DeLorean. I was gonna say this is this is what they look like. Yeah. Um, and this, this I think rolled off the lot in 80, 81, 80, 81. They are but cool. They announced the concept in the late seventies and it blew up. Everybody freaking loved it. They thought it would look super cool. Um, and then it was, it was advertised as like a supercar. Like it was going to be really fast and it was going to be very fuel efficient. Um, supposedly pretty green because you're not painting it and it's sure. fuel efficient and stuff like that, which was not a huge concern yet, but it was starting to become one for some people. Um, Are they manual or automatic? Actually, I actually don't know. Um, I do know that this was called the uh, the DMC 12 and they named it that for something that you're pretty passionate about. Actually, can you guess? Oh gosh, <laughs> the disciples. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they named it that because the price was twelve thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, I'm pretty passionate <laughs> about twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> no, you're passionate about companies branding things as the price. Oh, you that's talk true. About that a lot. Pretty dumb. Um, which uh, was now? How much does a DeLorean cost? <laughs> like not twelve thousand dollars. Tell you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm looking up twelve thousand dollars today. Um, so yeah, the price was about forty four thousand dollars. Was that they were billing? Sure. So in today's money, so they call it, it a DMC forty four, <laughs> and you'd be like, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so so it is a, a higher end car, but not like super pricey. Yeah. And so to get a, what was modeled as like a supercar, and like it's obviously pretty flashy. Um, it, hatchbacks weren't really a thing yet, so like everything about this was cool. Oh, they're hatchbacks. I mean, it looks like a hatchback. I don't know if it's a yeah, hatchback. I didn't know if that opened. No, that's an engine. The engine's back there. Oh, is it really? I think so. I guess okay. I just always assumed that. Yeah, that's I guess what you the don't know anything about is. the cars is what I'm guessing <laughs> is what I'm gathering from <laughs> these questions that I'm asking you right now. <laughs> but anyway, so he built this car. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the problem was they they did all this promotion for it and advertising the concept and, and it got really, really hyped and they were, they were getting brave reviews. Sure but he didn't have a place to produce it. Um, and so he started looking for um, <clears throat> uh, cities or states that would fund a manufacturing plant because a manufacturing plant is very, very expensive. And he couldn't find any investors to invest in it because they didn't believe that in the late 70s, early 80s, a new car company could compete with a GM or a Ford or any of the big companies that were big at the time. They're like, you don't stand a chance. You're never going to make it in this market. And so pretty much every city and state agreed. So he started going international and asking all these international um, nations <laughs> if, okay. they could, if they would invest in like tax subsidies or something like that. So he could open up uh, a manufacturing plant there and he couldn't find anyone and he's spending like a year looking for all these different locations to try to to build his manufacturing plant because he doesn't have the money for it, right? He needs a government pretty much. To he needs like a tax break. Happen. Yeah, so, so he that can use the money on that. Yeah, and then he finds um, Northern Ireland um, and in the early 80s Northern Ireland was going through what's called the troubles, which is kind of the <laughs> troubles. <laughs> yeah, which one sounds like a cool band name. <laughs> um, to maybe like a disease that gets passed around from like children. <laughs> That's just like, yeah, they get the troubles the right troubles. now. <laughs> yeah, chicken pox and troubles at the same time, huh? That's what I've got to say to my kids. I'm like, careful. You got the troubles. Well, when it, whenever one of them's in trouble, I'll be like, don't go around them. You're going to catch the You're troubles. You're going to catch the troubles. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, toxic workplace culture. Uh, so, so the did you just put your shoe back on? Oh no, no okay. You, no, you took your other shoe off. I was making sure. Yeah, I did. I couldn't take it. <laughs> I couldn't it's take hard it. to have one shoe on. Yeah, <laughs> it's really hard to just have. But that <laughs> discipline is what makes me better than you, and that's why you should give me this deal right now. The fact that I've kept one shoe on. You don't. You took your other shoe off. You don't I know checked that. a long time Are ago. You checked. I, yeah, I. Took, oh, you don't trust me. I took my. I don't think we've had enough you. trust for this take, working relationship. I didn't take my shoe off. You know how that works. I didn't take my shoe off yet, but then I, I, I was feeling it. I was like, I need to take this shoe off. I just I realized looked, that you have a UFO tattooed on you, and I respect nothing you say. You just realized this. Yeah. It's been there for a year. A year? Uh, nine months. It matches the one on your shirt. Does it really? Hey, that is a pretty good match. You think they modeled it after that? Okay. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? You're talking about how he <laughs> found it in Northern Ireland. He they got the troubles. Ah, yeah. They oh, got the troubles. they got trouble. They got the troubles right um, here in River City. <laughs> They got trouble that starts with T, which rhymes with D, which stands for DeLorean. Hey, that's hey. that's right there. Uh, so the troubles were uh, kind of a civil war, kind of uh, loosely, maybe I don't know. Long story short, there had been a very long conflict in Northern Ireland against uh, the UK because Kay. during I don't know the Middle Ages when Great Britain was being you know uh, settlers. They settled mm-hmm. Northern Ireland and they were like, this is ours now. And Ireland was like, no, it's not. And they're like, yeah, it is. And they're like, no, it's not. And then they were like, yeah, it's, it's ours. And also all of you aren't Catholic anymore. Now you're Protestant. And then they were like, they no, were we're like, not. And they're like, yeah, we are. And, and like, then, Hallelujah. <laughs> and then after a little while, they just created this border and they were like, this is Northern Ireland and it's part of the UK and it's not yours, Ireland. And there was a lot of conflict about that for, for many, many years. And then in the 60s, they're kind of split it, splintered these two groups, um, the IRA, uh, and then the uh, what? Is, what was the word that they? Uh, the loyalists. Yeah. They were loyal to the UK, and so and it was and it was very religiously undertoned because the IRA was all Catholic, and the people who were loyal to the UK were all Protestant, and so there was this. Um, this infighting between the two, and it got pretty violent. Um, and led to a lot of massacres and violence because massacres. Yeah, there was like <clears throat> the IRA was like bombing places and like okay. shooting up places because yeah. they were like, You're, we're not part of you. Yes. And so it was a very dangerous time in Northern Ireland um, and the economy in Northern Ireland was really struggling because of it because um, most people were getting hurt just doing normal everyday stuff because there's violence all over the place. And uh, <clears throat> he came and they said, hey, Belfast right now is a very dangerous place. There's a lot of uh, violence happening in there from the troubles. Uh, and they said, we actually would love it if you came and you built your manufacturing plant here. And they had a, this dream, the UK, and this okay. dream that if we build the manufacturing plant where the most of the trouble of the troubles is happening. <laughs> It'll unite them? Yeah. They're like, the workers they can unite around the DeLorean. The two were the worker. They'll employ people from both sure. sides and they'll get to work together on a project and they'll solve their differences working on this project together. And then also it helps our economy because then there's a big boost to the economy. Everybody's got a job. Everybody's working. Okay. And so they invested multi-million dollars to build this plant and get to work on this this DeLorean. Um, the problem was the people who then got hired to work at this plant had no idea how to build a car. Um, <laughs> And so they all started building this car, but it was bad. Um, yeah, they were like, does the engine go in the front or the back? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I assumed the back. They're like, is this, are these doors or wings? I can't tell. Both? Uh, I think they do both, right? Um, so they, uh, they built these cars, but they were honestly a lot like Tesla's. Like panels oh, were falling dude, off the inside yeah. of them. Like, Pieces were we missing. yeah we were in a test on the way out to yeah to Sunday cool <laughs> yeah it's fa- they're falling apart they on the literally inside. fall apart and it was the same concept because these people were not car manufacturers and yeah so like they could work but like there was just details and things like that that they were constantly missing no I think that I think that they were good at it but they were they just hated each other too much yeah they were fighting it was one of those things where it's like it's a two person job but the other person was. He was you know? coming back and unscrewing. And he's like, I'll just he do screwed. it. No, let me help you. No. no. 
No, I'll do it. So the cars are not yeah, great cars. Sure. Um, and after a year of production, they're only able to and like, I mean, how much does it cost to ship those over the United States like that? that, that I mean, a lot of really money. hurt your. Yeah, so I mean, it, they ended up <laughs> retailing for 24,000 double uh, what they yeah. were. Yeah, so uh, they didn't change the name though. They were still I do, that's what Tesla 12. did though though Tesla is like yeah, our base model started at 32,000. Yeah, and it's like okay, but if you want it to drive, it's going to cost sixty eight. <laughs> yeah, you so. want to turn it on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, turning it on costs yeah. our subscription plan, which is two thousand dollars a month. <laughs> okay. And you have to have it for four years. So sorry about that. Yeah, forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> um, same thing. Very, very much the same thing. Um, and then these cars ship, and they uh, they kind of sucked. Um, okay. They, what was the design like? What was the drawings? You say were you going to show me that? I mean, they look exactly the same. But oh, I thought you were saying okay. they looked exactly the same. Okay. But once you got them in the road, their zero to sixty time was eleven seconds. What were they advertised? I don't know what they were advertised as, but it was advertised as a supercar. But it's like yeah, because I, I don't think anybody took into account how long it takes to get stainless steel up to sixty miles an hour. <laughs> But the car was just yeah, stupid heavy. heavy. Yeah, it was yeah. stupid heavy. I'm like trying to do 60 miles an hour right here, right? This, I is, see this that. is probably 60. <laughs> yeah, that's right? about, I think that's about so 60. Like, if I'm going like. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's probably 60 right there. That's, that's 60 miles an hour. That's right. Yeah, you see how quickly I got my arm to 60 miles an hour. <laughs> it's because there's no stainless steel yeah, in here. Yeah, you put some stainless steel on my this hand. one. <laughs> <laughs> this is your 60 time. This one's real bad because all that steel in my hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, so it was super. <laughs> it was super slow. Uh, sure. And it, it <laughs> no, I'm listening. We haven't recorded this podcast in over a month and it shows. <laughs> That's all right. I'm listening. It's okay. Whatever. Keep doing your stainless steel hand bit. Um, the car uh, was also very fragile. Uh-huh. The, the Sometimes the doors wouldn't latch. Sometimes they wouldn't open. If it open. got stained, I'd be mad. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and and like panels would fall off. It was it was just not as advertised. It was advertised sure. like this supercar and it just wasn't. It was It was kind of cheap. Um, and so the reputation of the car started to go downhill and they started to sell not as well as they were, which is crazy because before these before these left the lot before production even began, there was pre-orders out for them and the dealerships across the country were so backlogged with DeLorean pre-orders, but did they honor the price then if they pre-ordered them at like 12,000? I don't think so. Um, what? <laughs> Imagine you go to buy a car yeah. for $12,000. Yeah. And they say, and you come back it, next week. And you go whenever they've made the car and they go, yeah. you owe $12,000. And you know, I already paid that. Yeah. And they go, yeah. Yeah. yeah you owe another 12. Yeah. It costs more. <laughs> Sorry. It cost them a little more. Because, you know, have you heard of the troubles? <laughs> Do you know about the troubles? Yeah. Your car costs more because the troubles. Is that like the wiggles or something? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's like a more dangerous. Also, it the, the kids get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they, but dealerships had so many people trying to pre-order these things, and they had such a backlog of pre-orders that it got to the point before production even began on the DeLorean. Most dealerships across the country were, were requiring out. a five thousand dollar deposit just to pre-order, and oh, so you had to wow. put five thousand cash down just to pre-order. That that was how hot these cars were, and then they come off the lot and they sucked, and so the reputation like kind of got tanked, and they were having a much harder time. You getting can't orders. return it. <laughs> Ship it back. Hey, thanks for checking out our show. If you like it and you want to support, be a part of what we're doing here, you can do that by becoming a patron. Uh, what happens there is you get to be in the community. Uh, we have a Discord with our hosts and producers. We have a lot of fun. We're super active in there every day. You get access to ad-free content a week before everybody else. And we have a Zoom every month with our patrons. Uh, we hang out, we eat pizza, we get to know you a little bit better. Uh, it's a blast. And there's a ton of other uh, different benefits like merch discounts, uh, birthday messages, things like that that are super cool. Uh, if you want to be in that, uh, you can just text Tillin to 66866 uh, and that'll get you right in there. Um, if not, we're just super glad that you're here uh, and thanks for watching our show. Um, 
Yeah, and so they were having a hard time getting uh, uh, their money back on that. Okay. Um, or, or getting people to purchase again after all of that kind of mess happened. Um, and then Margaret Thatcher came into power in the UK. And <laughs> Mar- Margaret Thatcher. Okay. <laughs> you try to say that name. Not, I just don't know. Try to say that name not like that. Margaret Thatcher. Mm-hmm. I just don't know <laughs> where it's going to go when you bring her up. Yeah, she came into power and she. Was That'd be not, like if all of a sudden you were like, and then George W. Bush, and you're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she came into power, and she was not a fan of government subsidy, right? And so she was like, no, we're giving you how much money? Yeah, to, her and to Reagan make these? were were very yeah. tight. Yeah, and they were like, they were like, okay. She's like, she's like, I'm not a fan of this government subsidy thing. And also, you guys thought that this was going to make everybody closer. Like, are you stupid? Because it wasn't. Like, there was constantly like bullet holes in the factory and like fights breaking out and stuff like that because. It wasn't a. It, it was an interesting it was idea. Troubles. It was. It was the troubles. Troubles afoot. <laughs> and so uh, she shuts the factory down, and she's like, "No more. I'm not funding this anymore." She didn't shut it down, but she stopped paying yeah, for it, effect, which effectively yeah, yeah, yeah. shut it down. Um, and so they started laying off workers, and that led into like a sit-in. And so all the remaining workers were like, "We're going on strike." Indoors. Well, and you know, turns out that the strike brought them together, <laughs> and you know, and nothing. That was the end of the troubles. Nothing unites uh, all the the divides mm-hmm. like some good old like, anti capitalism. Yeah, you gotta hate you know? the capitalists. Uh, and so they go on strike, uh, but it was it was to a point where there's no investors. There was really no one who cared that they were upset, and so they all ended up kind of getting laid off and. The factory had to shut down, and so now DeLorean's at a spot where he's got all these pre-orders for this car, and this car is like his pet project. He's like very proud of this car, yeah, and he wants it to succeed, um, and he's like desperate to resurrect the factory in Belfast. This and factory he bought for like forty-four million dollars. <laughs> he, he's desperate, and he's like, it's a lot of money, guys. <laughs> I wanted to pay twelve thousand. Now it's worth twenty two million dollars, and he's like, "That's That's half, half the money." Was it billion? Was it billion dollars? What? How much was Twitter worth? Oh yeah, it was a lot. I don't know what it was, but it was a lot. You might be close. Honestly, very similar story. Uh, he's trying to make it work. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's like, he's like, I out. really need this to be and a so thing. He is calling he's like, on so in order to drive these cars, you got to pay me eight dollars a month. <laughs> So he's calling every investor he knows, right. every government he knows, trying to get subsidies, trying to get investments to save this company, and he's coming up try. Sure. And then one day he gets a call from someone he doesn't know who's like, "Hey, I have a business proposition for you that I think sounds like you're gonna. It sounds like we know who it is." And he's like, "He's like, I got a business proposition for you. I think it's gonna, it could help you. I know, I hear you're in a tough spot with your company right now, and I think that this could help you reopen that factory and get your car company off the ground." And he's like, "He's like, meet me in this." Hotel room in San Diego, <laughs> and so he needs him in this hotel room in San Diego. Uh, Is that a thing that people have done in the past? I could not imagine having a meeting in a hotel room. Yeah, that sounds like a you're going to murder me meeting. No, I mean like or like you, you know like yeah. They, I just couldn't imagine does, yeah inviting anyone into my hotel room. I get uncomfortable if anybody's in my hotel room. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. I don't know if that was like, a past thing. It might have. Been it a past must have thing. been. Yeah. But anyways, but like if we were on a trip together, I wouldn't want you in my hotel room. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we're on make, the same page. Sure. Yeah. Unless you took one shoe. <laughs> yeah. Please take your shoe off. So <laughs> you say shoes, you say shoes, your, your shoe, shoe off. Your shoe. Please take your shoe. Put off. the boot. I have these put little the, booties that you can put on. <laughs> <laughs> on one. <laughs> only one. Okay. So you can take one off. This is stupid. Uh, so in 82, he goes to this hotel room for this meeting and he meets with this guy. Long story short, the guy is like, hey, I've got a bunch of cocaine. And I need you to finance the project. You finance the project. Here's the return I expect, and I think it'll be like seventy million dollars. What? Um, and so he's like, he's like, okay. He's like, I'll finance the the smuggle, and then it was like seven million dollars to finance the smuggle. What? And then uh, he was going to get like a seventy million dollar return, so he could reopen his factory. He was like, this is the best deal ever. This is real. So they uh, pour champagne. They toast. In, in this hotel room. Oh, he's an undercover guy. The doors open. FBI comes in. They arrest Why? him. Why? But that's that's entrapment, though. Yeah. And so there, here's uh, here's the video. Which uh, sidebar? I don't understand how anybody ever got arrested back then. Because you look at this, you can't tell me that's him. Yeah, this video. Yeah, footage, the jaw's too weak. Like, <laughs> <that is one laughs> the jaw's weak jaw. too weak. Uh, <laughs> what <is that>? Jaw. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, so that's entrapment though, right? So yeah, so he, this wait, was he seeking this out? Uh, no, so but this, that's entrapment then. <laughs> so this did he get out of this? So he gets arrested. Uh, did he get out of this? He goes though? in a two year long trial and throughout the trial because um, that is straight up. <laughs> yeah, so throughout the trial, uh, that's like someone calling me like, hey, heard you're having trouble making rent. Yeah. Got a great way for you to make some money. Let's meet up and you meet up and they go. We want you to smuggle a lot of this and you go. I'm desperate enough. Let's do it. And they yeah. go, got gotcha, you, sucker. That's <laughs> entrapment. You would not have otherwise committed a crime. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, so they go through this long trial. As he gets a two year trial. Um, bankrupts his company in the process. Has to actually declare bankruptcy on the company Dude, through the, the CIA legal fees. Um, and uh, the CIA did this, and that's the conspiracy, I believe. And <laughs> NASA did this. because he knew how colorful the moon was. <laughs> And uh, it came out that this guy that he got the call from was someone who was facing a ridiculous amount of prison time and they made him an offer. They said, if you can help us catch some people, then we'll lighten your sentence. And so he just framed people then. Yeah, he just started finding Set people who were desperate um, and calling on them. And so uh, it took two years, but after two years, they, cleared. they were able to prove it was after he's bankrupted his company after though. he already bankrupted his company and ruined his reputation. And so after after the whole thing in 83, his company's gone. His company doesn't exist. Oh anymore. my gosh. He dude. was on uh, some TV show and then they asked him. They the said, real are world, you going to get TV? <laughs> They're like, are you going to go back into into manufacturing? And he said, he said, well, I mean, he said over the past two years. He's like, I don't know how I could. He said, would you buy a used car for me? Um, and most people want it because they think they know him as a cocaine smuggler uh, because it yeah. was all over the news for two years. This mega maverick. This guy doesn't button his shirt, but he sells cocaine, which we should have known. He never wore a tie. He sells cocaine. Um, and oh so, my gosh, that's a new fear. Yeah. So it well, just don't agree to anything ever. <laughs> if someone makes an offer, disagree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so he he got out of it, but he couldn't get back into the car world um, because of his tarnished reputation. And so he spent well, actually, in, in this was eighty three when he kind of got out of the whole thing. Eighty five, Back to the Future comes out, and they chose the hey. DeLorean to be their car, and he loved it. Yeah, but the, the DeLorean didn't really exist anymore. Like there was only a few thousand that ever were made, um, but. He was he was stoked that they used his sure. car. Sure, he wrote a letter to Michael J. Fox. <laughs> was like, thanks for wait, but he didn't know <laughs> that they were going to use the car. I, I don't think so because there was no license anymore. Like, I think that's why they chose that car because no one owned the rights to it. It was a cool oh. car that it, the company didn't exist, and so they could just get it. Um, and that's so, interesting. So he was stoked that they ended up using it and immortalizing it, and, and it really was. How much is it to buy one now? They, on average, somewhere around fifty thousand dollars. Um, so I mean, okay, yeah. Um, you can have a car payment on a DeLorean. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but they're not great cars. That's the the they're kind of like they're really movie props. You're buying them as a movie prop. Is yeah. kind of what it is. Um, You're buying them so you can take them to Comic Con. Yeah, and everyone could be like, "Oh, cool! It's the, the car. It's uh, the thing. It's the it's the time machine." Um, here's the and thing, that, and even that's like got a time limit on it. You know, I <laughs> yeah. was thinking about this. I was thinking about Elvis impersonators the other day. You know they're almost done, right? <laughs> so he spends the rest of his life kind of dreaming about getting back into cars. And in the early two thousands, he starts really making some plans and like drawing some up some sketches. But in two thousand five, he ends up dying alone in a one bedroom apartment um, with a bunch of sketches for this car that the new Delorean he was trying to make. Well, here's the rub, though. I've never said here's the rub. <laughs> I know. Me and Alex both <laughs> went. Why'd you say that? <laughs> And Connor, I can see him I through the lens. I can see and Connor. He like, he's editing with his headphones on, and Connor went. <laughs> he's like, "Time for a break." Uh, so he doesn't even smoke, but he just picked it up. <laughs> you know, he's like, "I guess I'm going to get into this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his wife asked about it. Hey, Connor got married. Everybody say congrats yeah, to Connor. Yeah, hey, chat. congrats. I was just at Connor's wedding last night. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. it's a I different wasn't. Katie. That was weird. <laughs> I. The invite said Connor and Katie. I started, I was like, that's not the same Katie. Is it? <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was another one. I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Uh, it's kind of like every girl you dated. They're the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. 
<laughs> I gotta. I gotta. Hold Do you on. see this, Terry? I want you to see this. You see this? You see what's happening? Who's the bully now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's the rub. Uh, in 1985. Okay. The movie comes out. The DeLorean gets really popular. The okay. pro- DeLorean was prop- popular already, but yeah. it it got a tarnished reputation for a little bit, and then the movie revitalized it. Everyone's like, "Oh, yeah. that car's super cool! Remember that car? It was so cool!" And everyone's like, "But it sucked." But they're like, "Ah, it's okay." And everyone's like, "But the cocaine!" And they're like, "Ah, oh, but the car is cool. It's a cool car." Yeah, because they were all on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> but the car, yeah, the car, but the car. And so, some dude in Houston, Texas, okay. started a company called DeLorean. called DeLorean Motor Company. Oh my god! Because he said, "Oh, hey." The company's dead. What are they going to do? And so he started DeLorean Motor Company. And the company, the point of the company was they sold parts. So for people who um, do buy one, who do buy one. They, and so he went and he found, did a bunch of this um, uh, almost like investigative work to track down all the parts. Because after the factory shut down, uh, uh, they had liquidated it. They liquidated it. And the, the uh, UK government actually took a lot of it and just threw it all over the place <laughs> and just threw it everywhere. There was actually a long, a long running um, uh, conspiracy that because there was Margaret Thatcher and DeLorean kind of had this like feud at, yeah. the, at the end there. Well, yeah, so, she shut him down. Yeah, and so there was actually a conspiracy theory for a long time that Margaret Thatcher threw a bunch of the molds for the doors just into the Atlantic Ocean um, herself. <laughs> personally. <laughs> Like the she Titanic, was so strong. Just off the back of the boat, just. Um, and so, uh, dropping the necklace. There was this like conspiracy theory that that was something that happened, and I don't know why or how, but they proved this in the '90s. Someone scuba dived to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and found a bunch of the molds for the doors at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, and they confirmed it. And then in the late 2000s. Someone did some investigative work, and they were found, like, "Hey, we made that up." Well, no, it actually did happen. They did find them at the bottom of the ocean, but what actually happened was they sold them for scrap metal, and some fishing company was like, "These would be perfect anchors for our nets," but they were too heavy, and they just fell all the way to the bottom. <laughs> okay, and so they lost them, and so it was kind of true, but not. Yeah, I mean, it turns out that they did the get pictures the of, the of them the on the floor yeah. of the ocean were skewed because they were actually like a because soil deposit so far away. It was um, yeah, it yeah, looked like it says that on NASA. <laughs> so <laughs> they have the molds then. No, they're at the bottom of the ocean. They didn't the get scuba, them. Well, they're heavy. Scuba divers aren't strong. <laughs> okay, have you ever seen a scuba diver? They're not strong. They know where they are though. <laughs> yeah, they could get them, but they're not strong. They're not strong enough to get them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, but this DeLorean guy, he tracked down pretty much every other part, and he was selling parts until '95. In '95, the government did this interesting thing, where and I didn't know this was a thing, but apparently, before '95, there was uh, laws against small batch car manufacturing. Like you had to make a lot of them if you're going to make them. Really, which is really interesting. But this new legislation went through. I wonder why. <clears throat> I th- my guess is quality. I think my guess is they thought that you couldn't quality control below a certain number, like get the right quality. Isn't that That's the opposite guess. of what would happen? Well, because of the like equipment you need to manufacture. Okay. Like my guess is like the manufacturing equipment you would use at that small of a number, you wouldn't be able to meet like our standards. Okay. That's my guess. But they went. They did. Away I with think it. that law was in place to to make sure that competitors couldn't. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um. But in '95, they did away with it, uh, and so you could then. I think the smallest batch you were allowed was 300. Yeah, I mean, like if you're trying to open a restaurant, and the and the government's like, yeah, well, you can't make less than 3,000 hamburgers a day. Yeah, and you're like, well, that's not, you know, there's not that many people in this town, and they yeah. go, well, that's the law. So that's it's like, well, that's just McDonald's putting their thumb down on you, being like freaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so when that law came out in '95, they were like, we're bringing it back, and so. It's back. DeLorean baby. Motor Company, which is not DeLorean Motor Company. Yeah. They released all these concept art for the new DeLorean. And they're like, we're bringing the DeLorean back, baby. And everyone was like, whoa. And they're like, we're going to small batch it. Okay. Homegrown, homegrown from the state of Texas. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, but the problem was uh, the EPA took six years filing their paperwork. And so they couldn't actually get started until 2001. Yeah. And then when 2001 rolls around, uh, they got into a new scheme, uh, DMC, uh, which they were like, car manufacturing is expensive and really hard. But they were like, but we own all the rights to DMC. And so they started, they did like a limited edition Nike 
DeLorean Nike. They did what does that a mean? bunch of merch, like Nike shoe. They like, did like a DeLorean branded Nike shoe, and they oh, were they were like making money on the image from the movie. Yeah, and they were licensing the DeLorean Motor Company logo. Um, and in 2005, they actually got sued for it from the DeLorean family because they were like, you can't license this. You don't own it. And, and they, they actually, were like, hey, they settled outside of court and they were like, we own it. And they did. And they, they because they were like, well, we, you guys didn't keep it. The company went under and we started a new company called DMC and they made the exact same logo. And, but all that stuff had expired because the company was gone. And so now they were the owners of the DMC brand. Okay, and so they settled outside of court. They own the brand. Well, you can get DMC merch on our website, <laughs> tillandcom slash merch. Uh, and so I own it now. So they did that for a few years yeah. until 2015 when they were like, it'd be cool if we got into EVs because those are super big right now. And so they decided to make a DeLorean EV uh, and this is the concept car for that. Um, really? That is supposed to go into production in January this year, this next year. Um, Okay, uh, which I mean, it looks just like a DeLorean. Um, it's it's kind of cool, um, like a classic DeLorean, but it's it's an electric car now. Um, and yeah, it's, and it's a guy who was like a hobbyist who loved the DeLorean, um, but kind of stole the DeLorean out from the DeLorean family. And so the DeLorean family, not to be undone, his two kids, these two, you see him here, daughter, <laughs> daughter and a son. His daughter said. We need to keep the family name alive. Yeah, and so she started DeLorean Next Generation Company, and she is DNC. Making, yeah, she is making uh, her own DeLorean, uh, which looks strikingly similar to their. It's a DeLorean uh, EV, which is supposed to go into production January this year. They announced it four months after the DeLorean Motor Company announced it, and it looks just like it the looks other one. Exactly the same. It looks like the same car. Is there another angle of this? Uh, no, this is the only angle they've released. Oh, it was here's, just the butt. Okay. Here's the rub, though. <laughs> here's the thing with here's the thing with them, though. It's she, she, and this is interesting. I'm really interested to see how this pans out for her. Yeah. Um, she started this company. She brought on a lot of the original people because she's got connections to the family. So she brought on on a lot of the original designers and people that sure. she worked with to produce the original DeLorean. Um, but she instead of uh, starting a business, she started a 5013C. And so what they're doing is they're building these cars to be a nonprofit. And what they're using the, mo- the, the profits for from the car sales is they're doing STEM programs in underprivileged schools. And so she's like, we want to raise up the next generation of engineers, uh, is the idea. I'm interested to see how this pans out because I don't. <laughs> okay. <know. laughs> But, Feels fishy, but, but okay. You can donate now on the website <laughs> to the cause. I see. <laughs> I see the play. And so, uh, so she's like, she's like, we're gonna take down DMC. They've been in lots of legal battles with them ever since because yeah. like, you don't have the right. Look to at it. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. So <clears throat> it's the same car. Um, here's the thing. Uh, that's that's his daughter, right? Right. Started the. Is that dog gen- still alive? <laughs> yeah, the dog has a company too. Wait till you see. <laughs> Wait till you hear about the, the dog. The started. dog is making this. dog motor company. <laughs> DMC dog motor company. No, the son. Uh, the son. He started a company. Okay, uh, DeLorean Aerospace, and he's making this. <laughs> that he's doesn't like, even look he, like. He's okay, like, he's like, we don't need a car. We need a personal jet. And so that's what he's it's making. It's a two seater. Yeah, yeah, it's just in the idea propeller for some is, reason. Why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're going to do all this stuff, why not just make it a jet? Uh, I think the idea is it's supposed to be affordable. Um, okay, the, and, that propeller's not okay. It's a vertical takeoff, so like that thing moves. So, no, so you can take off that's vertically. Not and so the idea that's, is that that's not going to work. The idea is that you and I we we can have one of these in our driveway. And we can just vertically take off from our driveway. This is how we're getting around town. That's not going to work. Um, and so he's. He's always been the dreamer of the family. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it's not going to work. <laughs> so there's now three DeLorean companies out there: DeLorean Motor Company, DeLorean Next Generation Company, and DeLorean Aerospace, and they're and all making motor vehicles. <laughs> and DeLorean now, Media, Media Company, company. <laughs> bro. All Hold right, on. let me call our lawyer. I gotta we, put this in. DeLorean in, Media yeah, Company. Yeah. All right, fiddle off. We're, I'm calling our lawyer right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment to outweigh all the grifters. Uh, and then we've got playlists on the screen. You can watch new videos if you haven't seen them. Uh, we have a massive back catalog, so you should go check them out. Uh, if you want to become a patron, you can go to tillin.com to do that or buy our merch, whatever you want. Uh, 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 just thanks for being here. We appreciate you.